We're going to finish the lesson from Thursday. It's 610, one-step algebraic equations using multiplication and division. I do want you to grab your notes because I want to make sure that we're getting the last couple examples that we didn't get in our notes yesterday into our notes today. So I'm going to go ahead and review one of the examples we did in class just as a reminder and then we'll go into what we missed yesterday. So this first one is 328 equals 4r. I'm going to draw that line down the middle and our first step is always to find our variable. So our variable here is r and I need to figure out how to get r isolated or by itself. So what number is on the same side as r? In this equation 4 is on the same side so I'm going to write the 4 right below but I have to balance. I gotta put the four underneath on the other side. And remember, since there's not an operation here, it's understood that four R means four times R. The opposite or inverse of multiplication is division. So we're gonna put a division bar on both sides. Remember, I don't wanna see division written that way. I want to see the division written as a fraction bar. Now we have four divided by four which is one, and I'm gonna bring my r straight down. Now remember, one times r equals r, so I'm not going to leave it that way. I'm going to leave it as just r. I'll bring down my equal sign, and on the left I have to do 328 divided by four. Four doesn't go into three, it goes into 32 eight times with nothing left. I'll bring down the eight, Four goes into eight twice, nothing left over, so my answer is 82. Now, does that make sense? We'll go back to the original. 328 is supposed to equal four times r, which is 82. So I'm gonna see if that actually works. 82 times four, eight, 32. 328, which is what was listed. Yep, I did it right. Now, we're gonna move on to the other part of the lesson we didn't get to today. Still algebraic equations, still working with multiplication and division, but I'm still gonna use those same steps. I'm gonna put that line down the middle so I can see the left side and the right side of my equation. Remember, the first step is to find your variable. So my variable here is x, and I need to isolate x. So I need to decide what number needs to move. And in this situation, five is on the same side as my x. So I'm gonna write five below on the left and five on the right, so I balance. And over here I see a division sign. The inverse or opposite of division is multiplication. So I'm gonna write a time sign here and a time sign over here. All right, next step is to do my math. Now this looks kind of weird over here. So I'm gonna write what it means over on the other side. I have x over five times five. Now, since this is a fraction, I'm gonna make five a fraction by making it five over one. Now, I can cross cancel. I can cross these fives off and put ones, and that there's nothing else left to cancel. So if I do my math, x times one is one x. Again, remember, one times x, we don't write that way. We write it as just an x. On the bottom, I have one times one, which is one. Again, when you were to have a denominator of one on a fraction, we don't write that. We just leave the numerator on its own. So all of that work gave me an x or a one x. Remember, I had a one x over here first before I erased it. So the same thing over here, there's my one X because these canceled out, but I don't write one X. We don't write the one. So over here, I'm not gonna write the one either. That's what I, that was what I was looking for. So get rid of that one, bring down your equal sign. And we're gonna do the math on the right side. We have 125 times five. It's 25, 10, 11, 12. Five, six, 625. Now, does that make sense? I'm gonna go back to my original. 625 over five is supposed to equal 
125. Well, let's see if this actually works. 625 divided by 5. Goes in once. Bring down the 2. Goes in twice. 2 left. Bring down the 5. Goes in 5 times. Nothing left. 5, 125, that's what I was looking for. So yes, I did that correctly. So let's see if we can do another one. I have x over 4 equals 16. I'm going to split this, so I have a left side and a right side. i got to find my variable. My variable here is the x. So what am I going to move? What number do I have to get rid of? In this question, it's the 4. So I'm going to write the 4 below. And I'm going to make sure I do it on both sides. Again, I see division here. And the inverse or opposite of division is multiplication. So I'm going to write that time sign on both sides. Now, over here when I do the work on the left side with the x over 4 and times 4, I'm not going to show you everything I just did over here before. I know they cancel out, so I'm just going to cross through them. My answer was 1 and I'm going to bring down that x. Again, we don't write the 1, we just write the x. Bring your equal sign down, and now I have to do 16 times 4. I'm just going to do it right over here. It's 24, 4, 5, 6, 64 is my answer. Now does that make sense? I'm going to go back up to the original. 64 divided by 4 is supposed to be 16. Let's actually see if that works. Four goes into 64 once, two left, bring down the four. Four goes into 24, 16, 24, nothing. Yep, we did it correctly. Okay, I have two for you to try. 121 equals n over 11. I'm going to split so I have a left side and a right side. My variable is n. What number am I going to move? I'm going to move 11. So I'm going to write it on both sides of my equation. I see a division sign here. So the inverse of division is multiplication. I know these cancel out. Their answer is 1. So I'm going to bring down the n. But remember, I just want the n equals and then I have to do my multiplication, which I'm going to do over here so I have more space. I'm going to go ahead and multiply that out. One thousand three hundred thirty-one. That is my answer. But does that make sense? One twenty-one is supposed to be one third. One thousand three hundred thirty-one divided by eleven. Let's see if that actually works. Divided by 11. 11 doesn't go into 1, but it goes into 13 once. That's 2 left. Bring down the 3. 11 goes into 23 twice. 1 left. Bring down the 1. 11 goes into 11 once with nothing left over. 121. 121. That is correct. Last example. I'm going to split down the middle, so I have a left side and a right side. I need to find my variable. The variable is n. So what number do I have to get rid of or move? I have to move this 6 because it's on the same side as my variable, so I'm going to write that on both sides. I see that division sign there, so the inverse of division is multiplication, so I'm going to write two times signs. And then I'm going to solve. These cancel out. 1. Bring down your n, but I'm not going to write that. I'm just going to write the n. Equals 231 times 6. I'm going to do the math right here. 1,386. Now, does that make sense? Does 231 equal my answer divided by 6? Well, let's check it out. 6 doesn't go into 1, but it goes into 13 twice. Bring down the 8, goes into 18 three times. Bring down the 6, goes into 6 once. 231, that's what I was looking for. I did it correctly. 
So what I would like you guys to do is try the worksheet that your teacher is going to hand out. And remember, my focus is in your steps. I'm looking at those way before I look at the answer. So make sure it's like a mirror. You have double of everything. You have two of the numbers and you have two of the operations. And don't forget to make sure you check to see if your answer makes sense. Good luck.